All right, in this video, we are going to be looking at analyzing firmware. We're going to be using QEMU and Benwalk to understand what type of image this firmware is. And we're going to learn how to analyze firmware and emulate it through the QEMU emulator. So basic requirements are a basic understanding of firmware and knowledge of Unix commands. Let's go ahead and get started. So, all right, first thing I want to do is prepare my environment. And I've copied a couple files over to my machine. And I put those in my downloads folder. And uh, these are the files. This is my firmware. And this is my ARM image. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to terminal and get this process started here. First thing I want to do is I want to install QEMU. That is an emulator. I'm just going to type in sudo apt install QEMU dash y. Type in my password. All right, so that was the QEMU. Now there's one more thing I have to install, and that is the binary. So let me do that, sudo apt install QEMU-system-y. These are for all of the different system emulations here. We've got a couple more things we're going to install as well. All right, now let's do ahead, go ahead and do this for the ARM system emulation binaries. I'm going to type sudo apt install qemu-system-arm-y. And ARM is already installed and at the newest version. A couple more things to install. Let's get the common system emulation binaries. Installed, and let's also check my MIPS emulation binaries. All right, very good. Let's also do my PPCs. All right, and my user mode emulation binaries. All right. And a couple more things. Let's get my static user mode emulation binaries. Let's get my QEMU utilities. And finally, Binwalk, the tool we're going to use later for the emulation to break it apart. All right, excellent. So 
they would like us to make a file called Firmware Forensics. I'm going to go ahead and do that on my uh, desktop. And I'm going to put those files in there. So Firmware Forensics. And let me move those two files to that place. Desktop. OK. Perfect. Let's go ahead and navigate to that location. Here are my files. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to use binwap, or sorry, binwalk, to identify the firmware's image type by running the binwalk command without any flags. So let's go ahead and do that. Binwalk, tab to complete, open WRT, and we see we have Linux kernel ARM executable Z image. And that's why we went ahead and installed the QEMU ARM emulation. And this will also indicate that we have a Linux kernel image right here. Linux kernel ARM boot executable Z image. So that looks great. So next, let's go ahead and check the entropy of our firmware file. And entropy is used for reverse engineering and binary analysis. Data that are compressed and encrypted are close to the maximum possible level of entropy, which allows you to differentiate then from uncompressed and unencrypted data. The use cases for analysis can be for malware, firmware, and file identification. So that's why we use entropy. And with Binwalk, we're going to be able to examine the entropy of our firmware. So let's go ahead and get started. So Binwalk with the dash E command here. And here we go. And you see that uh, we get a nice graphic there showing our entropy of our file. Pretty much a, a straight line. OK. And let's go ahead. And they would like us to also compare the entropy of the LS file to show you some of the differences here. So let's go ahead and do that. We make a. Uh, a new tab here. Slash bin for binary. And we know that the ls is list files command here. And there you go. So if you take a look at both of these side by side, one of these files has lots of entropy. One of these has very little entropy. All right, so if I close these commands, I get my prompt back. So we're going to go ahead and navigate back to our other one. And we want to go ahead and use strings to extract strings from the file by running strings and with a count of 10 or a number 10 here. So let's go ahead and do that. So this time I'm navigating back to where I was, typing in the strings command. And don't forget, if you ever want any help you can do dash dash help, right? And it says displays all the printable strings in files using standard input as the default. And the one we're going to use is the dash n command right here to locate and print any null terminated sequences um, for a number of characters with the default being four. So let's go ahead and try that out. So strings dash n 10 open WRT. We're actually going to be able to get any uh, text that is in this binary file. And as you see, if I scroll up here, we're getting a lot of data here. Let's go to the top. There we go. So starting right here, 
you see that well, here's our um, Linux kernel image right here. And we get some information about it on compressing Linux, booting the kernel. And XZ decompressor ran out of memory. Input is not in the XZ format. Wrong magic bytes. And don't forget, magic bytes help you identify what type of file this is. And then we get a whole bunch of other information at the bottom here, a whole bunch of random characters. All right, so for comparison, we're going to do the same thing with the ls command here. So I'm going to type in strings slash bin slash ls. And as you see, a much different image here, right? Look at that. All this is from the LS command. Pretty impressive, huh? There you go. All right, so um, the question is based off of the results regarding the firmware file, you know, is it compressed, is it encrypted, or is it not compressed or encrypted? Well, one thing that you can um, deduce is that based off of the entropy measurement and the output of the strings command, we can assume that our file is encrypted or compressed. So let's go ahead and uncompress it here and extract the files of the um, file that we got here for our firmware. So again, I can do bin walk dash dash help take a look at my syntax and we're going to be using the me uh, switches here so dash m recursively scan extracted files right and then we're going to do the dash e extract known file types okay so let's do sudo bin walk dash m e Open WRT. Now, as you see, you got a lot of stuff that was extracted there. And again, the dash M recursively scans the extracted files, and the dash E will automatically extract known file types. So let's take a look at what was extracted. As you see, a new folder was created right here. Open WRT. Let's go ahead and navigate in there. And you see all this data right here was in that firmware. And as you can see, you know, this was a um, OpenWRT firmware, which is in fact a um, routing software. It's open web routing software. So in case you wanted to really get professional level capabilities on your small or home office router, you can install the OpenWRT firmware on that and really transform your router to make it act like an enterprise grid router with lots of the bells and whistles here. So that's in fact what we're looking at. And again, we're also looking at the ARM version of it or the ARM CPU architecture, but pretty cool, right? And again, we're just playing with firmware and we're actually able to open it and extract it. And uh, you know, the same type of stuff we would do if, if we were doing digital forensics or DFIR. So as you see, we had a lot of files in there, right? Um, so pretty cool. Let's go ahead and keep going. And the next thing we're going to do here is um, we actually want to emulate um, the firmware that we've downloaded. And just for some context, you know, I think, uh, Let's go ahead and see if we can't show you the uh, OpenWRT 
show what it's all about, right? So this is the project, right? So again, this is software for our routers, right? Um, it's a Linux embedded operating uh, system for your routers. And it's, it's pretty great, right? And it does support a lot of firmware. And this is exactly what we're looking at, this type of firmware. Um, you would just type in your um, router. Let's do uh, Linksys. And for example, let's do, I don't know, these E2500. And you see um, platform Broadcom 47 with the MIPS ar architecture. As you noted, we did install that. So we could play with MIPS uh, files as well. And these are all the packages that are installed, included in this firmware. And then you could download the binary um, if you would like. All right, let's go back to our lab. So like I said, our next step is we're going to actually emulate um, our firmware and simulate working in this router. So let's go ahead and try this. We've got a lot of commands to type in here, but uh, it's not going to be so bad here. All right, so I'm just going to go back a little bit, clear out my screen, desktop, firmware. All right, let's go ahead and emulate this thing. So don't forget, we had our QEMU-system-ARM. This is going to help us emulate our ARM and CPU instruction set. Dash M, vert, dash 2.9. Now I want my kernel, arm image, no reboot. No graphic. And vert IO, that is the uh, input output. Network PCI adapter. putting this on port 8080. All right. I'm just going to take a second to check my syntax here, make sure everything looks good. QEMU-system-arm-mvert-2.9. Dash kernel arm underscore image. Dash no. Dash reboot, dash no graphic, dash device, vert, IO, net PCI, dash net dev, user, comma, ID equals net one, hosts ported to TCP, coin coin 8080, to 80, device, vert, IO, dash net, PCI, Net dev equals net one dash append. All right, I think my syntax looks good. Uh, let's see. Uh, dash no invalid option. Let me see where my error is. Probably next to arm image. I think that's dash no dash reboot. Let's see, dash net PCI, invalid option, let me see. Uh, 
Oh yeah, looks like I have a little space there. Let's try this. There we go. And as you see, it's starting to get my emulation started. So it says uh, after one minute or so, you're going to go ahead and get this started. And if all is good, we should see an open WRT image, and we will reach the firmware's terminal. All right, let's try to press enter here. There we go. That looks great. So as you see, we're actually emulating our router. And you can see here, we actually, it says there is no root password defined on this device. Use password command to set up a new password in order to prevent unauthorized SSH logins. So let's go ahead and since we're in the shell of this one, let's go ahead and get our IP address. You see, we have been given an IP address. We're going to note that down for later. It looks like we got a 1.1 um, address for this one, I believe. All right. And we can also take a look at our root user's password. We can do that by looking at the Etsy shadow. And again, right now I'm still in the uh, WRT firmware, not on my local host. And as you see here, the root user does not have a password because our second field is actually empty there. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, try to browse to the host. Again, you saw we were on port 80. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's go to local host colon 8080. And it says the connection is blocked. So let's go ahead and stop our firewall see if we can't get back on. So we're going to basically stop it using the Etsy init.d slash firewall stop. All right, let's try this again. Here we go. We're now in our open WRT again. This is emulated. Let's go ahead and log in. We saw that we didn't have a password for root. Let's go ahead and log in here. And there we go. We are now on our the firmware, right? This is all through software. Let's go ahead and um, keep on going here. And they would like us to go to the password configuration option and set a password. All right, I'm going to do. Um, a, A, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the same thing, A, A, one, two, three, four, five, six, the one we have been using for this class. And then I'm going to click on Save and Apply. All right, it might take up to 30 seconds for this to work. All right, now let's go back to our Etsy shadow and see if we have a password now. And you see there, boom, we actually have something, whereas before we had nothing. So we know that we now have a, a password for our root account. Again, that is how you can open up firmware and emulate it through an emulator like QEMU. So if you'd like, go ahead and try some other firmware using similar tactics as we did in this lab. All right, I'll see you in the next one.